Hi, I'm James Lodge, a design and advanced manufacturing consultant at Symmetry, based in the UK. And in today's video, we're going to take a look at the what's new features and enhancements made to Autodesk Inventor 2026. One of the first things you'll notice is the overhaul to the open and or save dialog boxes. Users now have access to the projects list at the top left hand side of the screen or can go directly into the projects dialog box with this handy button. Any changes need making to the active project or project being worked on can be done so from here. And all mapped folder locations are still found in the left hand panel. However, if you do step outside of your active project, you're greeted with this warning symbol at the bottom, seen in orange on the screen now. Users can now access different locations on the computer and drag files into the active project should the need be required. You can quickly make new folders and access different folders as you'd expect. When opening files, users now can open directly in express mode from the open dialog box, select specific model states, design views or positional views. You can still access the different file formats at the bottom right, or search for and open files directly from the vault in the bottom left. You can also copy and paste folder locations in the address bar at the top. When saving files, Opening the Save As dialog box also had the overhaul, so you can still save to locations other than the active project, on the network drive or on your computer. But with some new improvements made, the Save Preview picture also allows the ISO view to be created when the save is introduced. The next enhancement has been made to the Parameters dialog box. So for all you users out there that utilize parameters in your daily workflows, this enhancement is for you. Autodesk have now introduced an option that allows designers to add parameters to a named group. So by selecting a parameter and then add to group, this allows the user to create a named group and add that specific initial parameter to the group. Once the group is created, Users can then right click and select another parameter and add that to the already existing group. Users can add both model and custom user parameters to a specific group. When more than one group is actually created, when the user right clicks on a specific parameter, they can then select a specific group from a drop down menu, making it very easy to manage parameters. This helps speed up your workflows and make managing parameters a much more efficient way of working as some aspects of a design may have a lot of parameters associated with it. So by arranging them into groups, it gives you quicker access to specific areas of your design that may require an update to the dimensions and size, for example. This has got to be one of my favorite enhancements to the 2026 release. Multiple sheet metal commands have been moved over into the new browser panel modern interface, improving the create and edit workflows. Here you can see the face command. The face command you can now jump into the sketch environment to make changes and back into the feature itself to see them applied. Users also have access to a sheet metal default override menu, allowing users to quickly apply the sheet thickness for this design. Flange and contour flange have also moved into the new panel interface. As with face command, users can now access the sheet metal default override menu to quickly add a sheet thickness. You can also change the bend rule and unfold rule from this menu as well. Autodesk have also added in the option to create presets, meaning that users can set up multiple values and save them as a preset so that they can easily be selected for use in the future. The punch tool have also moved over into the browser panel interface. Users can now select the different punches from this handy drop down where you can see thumbnails. It's directly updated inside the graphics window with the preview, but users can also change the size of the punch and the parameters of the punch directly from the command window itself, making it a much quicker workflow. 
Enhancements have also been made to the pattern tools. Not only has it moved over into the new user interface, but users can now directly select the direction from within the command panel itself. This can either be with the X, Y or Z directions, or a specific direction if needed. This can be done for both distance A and distance B. An introduction of irregular distances has also been added into the pattern feature. This allows users to select a specific patterned instance and give it a different distance from the originally selected feature. Users can add multiple different irregular distances, making this enhancement very useful for the patterns needed in a design. As expected, the preview updates instantly and when completed, the users have the general options that might be needed to suppress specific elements of that patterned feature. Enhancements have been made the assembly mirror command. When selecting components, users have access now to the mirror pattern feature. This enables users to mirror the geometry and position of specific source components. You can still rename the mirrored components but when accepted, you now see the mirror pattern feature in the design tree showing different elements as you would see with a general pattern command. Because of this, users also have access to the create flat structure option as previously. This allows you to make changes to the position, etc. but you can mirror the relationships and you can ground the components in place if you need them to retain the position after the mirror plane is selected. Again, you can name the mirrored components to whatever naming structure you might need. Each year, we see an ever-growing need to close the design information gap between manufacturing and the AEC industries. Because of this, Autodesk have also made some further enhancements into the interoperability for Inventor 2026. Users now have access to categories relating to Revit directly inside the Bill of Materials environment. So you can now select the Revit category option in Customization Tools Place this inside the Bill of Materials dialog box and select specific Revit related categories dependent on the design that you're actually working on. This is done very easily by double clicking, accessing the drop down menu, and selecting the required category. In this instance, I've assigned mechanical equipment to some of these CNC machines that you can see in the mod. As we all know, entering property information in the Bill of Materials dialog box directly affects the eye properties at part or sub-assembly level. But you can also edit the parts and go into eye properties and directly select the Revit category from a drop-down menu in here also. Server enhancements have been made in the BIM content environment where users can now include properties by selecting this button directly from the ribbon. This allows users to select multiple properties that need to be added into an exported Revit file. You can also select a default for any of the components that haven't had a specific category selected in the Bill of Materials or I properties process. So when exported, all of these other components will take on this specific category. Also, when selecting categories and adding specific properties into the actual BIM content itself, presets can now be created, making this process much faster and allowing you to add specific properties where needed quickly. Other enhancements have been made to the placement options 
allowing users to literally select a specific RVT placement ready for export. So when imported directly into Revit, it sits in the position it is intended.